morning. On today's episode, we are going to talk about AC waveforms with TIG welding. Now, you may have no idea what they are or what they do. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding and you'll be able to make better use of them. Now, not all machines have adjustable wave shapes, waveforms. Older transformer machines that you may have are probably fixed in the sine wave wave shape and it's not adjustable. Some newer machines uh, are just fixed in what's called square wave or advanced square wave. Now, if you're unsure if your machine has adjustable waveforms, look at the manual or contact the manufacturer to see because I found that some of them are hidden under like multiple button menus and it's not readily apparent that you can adjust it. So look into that. So on this machine, which is new Dynasty 210, we'll go to process, we'll make sure we're under AC TIG. We will go home, go under AC wave, and we're gonna go under AC waveform and I'm just gonna switch that to square wave. So what the waveform is depicting is the shape of essentially the positive to negative transitions. Now, my previous video I did on frequency for AC frequency control, that's how many times per second that the wave shape runs through its paces basically. So this is the actual wave shape. So this depicts, we'll call this the positive and negative. There'll be a line essentially here of zero amp output. And this is how many times per second is the frequency that it goes through the shape, but this is depicting the actual shape. Now, a lot of modern inverters went to square wave as an only output and it's not adjustable. The reason they did this is that square wave works really good with aluminum because it kind of causes, I guess a good way to describe it would be a fast freezing of the weld pool. It makes it really easy to stack metal and make a really good looking weld. So a lot of like your uh, Lincoln Electric TIG 200, that's square wave output. Now older machines, like I had mentioned earlier, are uh, like the transfer machines, they output sine wave and the reason they output sine wave is because the outlet power that they're plugged into is actually a sine wave so essentially your house or building the ac current that powers a welder uh functions in the sine wave so those machines essentially just output what they input well in this machine you can adjust the output separate of the input so you have square wave soft square wave sine wave and triangle wave to understand what's really going on here it's very simple. Look at this is just heat. So as it comes up here and your wave comes up here, it's outputting heat or amperage, comes down here, heat amperage. The area in the middle, it's outputting essentially no heat. Now you can tell that this wave shape spends a lot of time outputting a very consistent amount of amperage and then it immediately switches over and outputs a consistent amount of amperage. So the heat input of this wave shape is fairly high. When you go over to like a triangle wave, it spends very little time at maximum output during the wave shape and spends more time essentially at lower output. So the triangle wave at say 100 amps will input less heat into the aluminum than 100 amps on square wave will. Essentially because this peak, if this is set at 100 amps, the peak is 100, that's 100. How much of it is spent not at peak? Almost all of the time versus all the time, you know, that is spent at peak. Now, when you get into soft square wave, all that does is round the corners off a little bit which kind of changes the noise of it. So reduce noise, it uh, slightly changes the puddle. I don't find it significantly different. Sine wave, I don't mind running sine wave. Again, you're not spending a whole lot of time at peak amperage. So what you're gonna notice is if you're used to welding at 100 amps with square wave, and then you go to say triangle or sine, 
100 amps will not give you as molten of a puddle simply because your heat input is less. So that's something you have to keep in mind. So like if you're trying to weld thick aluminum, and this machine here is only 210 amps, and you're trying to weld quarter inch aluminum, you don't want to attempt that at, with a triangle wave because your actual overall heat input is going to be lower with this than it will be on square, despite you still being at 200 amps output or 210, if that makes sense. This machine also, and this kind of goes well beyond the scope of this video, has what's called advanced AC. Now, I'll do a whole video on this in the future. For right now, I don't think enough of you guys really would benefit by the control this gives you. And most welders out there simply don't have the capability of this. But I'll just briefly discuss what this is. Essentially, and this is actually a very good depiction, it allows you to control how much amperage is on the EP side, so the positive side versus the EN. By doing that, you can essentially put more heat into the piece on the penetration side and less on the cleaning. And it still allows you to have cleaning, so your molten puddle and your aluminum welds clean, but it can, in theory, increase penetration. It, it's basically like an extra control now, I welded aluminum for years and years and never had the ability to split uh, the AC like what that's depicting. I have used it quite a bit since I bought this welder. It does work, I'll put it to you that way, but I haven't seen a huge benefit to it other than say if I'm welding quarter inch thick aluminum, I can get better penetration with it with less overall heat input, if that makes sense. So. I don't put too much cleaning in it. I get the cleaning I want. I get better penetration. It seems to work in that respect, but for most things, like you don't need that adjustability to do like phenomenally good aluminum TIG welding. Honestly, you don't. It's just like a feature that for certain circumstances is a benefit. And once I do a lot more projects with it, I'm gonna shoot a video directly referencing that. Let's go back home. That pretty much covers uh, what I want to talk about with wave shapes. If you guys have any other questions or comments or want to understand some a little better, just feel free to shoot me a message, drop me a like. Have a great day.